So in the previous beginner's guide, I showed you how to create this pie chart displaying the number of friends uh, that we have listed down here in the sheet area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of functionality to this. So if you're starting this from the beginning, I will be posting a link back to the previous beginner's guide part one in this post. So you can go back there to download the source so you can start from where I am right now. Um, or you can go through that whole post as well just so you can learn that piece if you like. So what I'm going to show you in, in this video is how to make these values more dynamic based on a control that's going to be on your dashboard. So you notice that over here in my components pane I can select from a bunch of different components. So the first one I'm going to pick is this dial. and I'm going to drag it over uh, and I'm going to give it a title. So this this dial is going to be for the number of friends that John has. I'm going to map it to John's name so that way we know it corresponds to John. And you can resize this if you want, make it a little smaller so it's a little bit nicer on the page. And then this data field, I'm going to map this to John's number of friends. And notice it's going to jump to 50 because I have down here that John has 50 friends. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and preview this and this is actually going to work. I mean that's pretty much it for this gauge control or sorry the um, the dial. I'm going to hit preview. And notice when I when I attempt to change this value for John here, John's friends are going to change right there. So I'm going to See, notice John getting more friends, getting less friends. Okay, so I don't like the dial control though, and I'm going to explain to you why. It, from a usability standpoint, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because generally a user is going to want to grab the dial pointer here and dial it like they would on a radio. And as I see how I'm trying to dial down and it's not going down, it's not working properly. So on this side it works fine until I get to the peak here and then what happens is when I try to go down over here it just decreases the value. So I personally don't like these dials but I did want to show you that you could use a dial. So I'm going to do some unpreview. And I'm just going to delete this this dial and I'm actually going to go down and look for a horizontal slider. So here's your horizontal slider And what I'm going to do is do a similar where I map the title so we know whose slider it is. And I'm going to also map the data. Um, I, now you can set the scale here, so what's the min and max. So if I set the maximum at 100, then John can't have any more friends than 100. We're basically saying he's never going to make any more friends than 100. So what we'll do is we'll actually come down to our sheet and just set a min and max values here. So we'll say min of 0 and max of 500. Uh, 500. 500 is a reasonable amount. We'll say so the max that somebody can have is 500 and the minimum that somebody can have is 0. So those are mapped to the sheet. Now that makes that a little bit more dynamic and I can reuse those values for everyone. That way if I need to change the max I don't have to change it for every single horizontal slider, I just change it in the sheet here once and it updates it for all of them. So what I'm going to do now is preview this. And you'll notice that this makes a little bit more sense from a usability standpoint that um, I can only move left and right. I can move down and I can move up. Down and up. It's not confusing to the user when they have the dial and it's not working properly. So uh, in the, the components pane, there's also a vertical slider. So if you choose, you can actually do vertical sliders. And they work exactly the same. It's just that they're vertical. So I'll do a vertical slider for Steve. Let me move this a little bit. And you can actually you can adjust the sizes if you like. You can make them wider. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to go ahead and map the data for Steve. And I'm going to set the min and max as well, because we don't want him having more friends or having the possibility of having more friends. So I can adjust Steve, I can adjust John. So if I max John and Steve out, notice that proportionally Adam and Eric 
lose space on the pi, but they actually have the same values, 100, 100 150, 200. Um, so it's pretty easy to do this, and you can quickly kind of replicate this functionality. So I can copy and paste Steve's. There we go. S Steve's vertical slider, and map that to Adam. And I don't need to worry about the min and max because they've already been copied. And I will copy this again and paste it again for Eric. And I'll show you a shortcut here for aligning these in a second. So now they're mapped. And as I preview this, you'll see that now I can adjust each one and it adjusts the pie chart. So you may say, well, look, these three controls here are great, but now they are all off-centered, and I don't like that. So what you can do is you can actually select all three of them by control left-clicking and going up to Format, Align, say Align Left, and what that does is it just aligns them all to the furthest left point of all three controls, which you don't want to do that because now they're all on top of each other. So let me separate these again, and I'll select Steve first because I'll use that as the reference point. So I'll say space evenly across, so it kind of makes sure that the same distance across. I'll say format space evenly down, which then tries to put them at the same height. And I'll say make same size width. So now I make sure they're the same size. Now I copied them so they are the same size. And I'll align to the top. So now that they all align to the top. So they're all the same size. They're all the same width. They're all the same distance from each other. And now they're all starting points at the top are the same. So when I preview this, Notice now that they look a little bit nicer, that they're spaced evenly and they're the same size. Um, so that's that's it for this example. This example's purpose was just to show you how to do more inputs now into your spreadsheet to make your dashboard more interactive. So as I said, in part one of the beginner's guide, we just showed you how to create the pie chart. Now in part two here, what we've done is we've showed you how to interact with your spreadsheet values that affect your pie chart.